Hey everyone, Wonderbot here, and welcome to, I guess, the first. I'm looking for footage for hack and slash action RPGs in the same vein as Diablo, and this is one that I've been specifically wanting to, uh, uh let's change my save slot. Uh, I've played this game a couple of times. I've never gotten very far, only about an hour and a half in, uh, so we're just gonna dive in solo. But I want to get some footage for as many of them as I possibly can, and Victor Vren's top of my list of games that I really want to at least promote to some some base level because I think it's a really neat one because you play as a character the level the levels are actually hand designed Zakaravia, and there's a little bit more of an action combat feel to it city the land of no return wait is this Geralt where darkness won and we demon hunters lost one year ago a plea for help summoned hunters to Zagaravia many answered the call no one returned <laughs> I thought Adrian dead, until a raven delivered his message. He too summoned me to Zagaravia. He saw what I seek. Adrian is a friend, one of the precious few I have, and the only man who knows of my past, of the pact I made, and the demon powers I wield. haunts this cursed city I will face to find my friend I I think that is Geralt okay I want to check one quick thing in the options aha detail level his uh, detail level is low. I was wondering, it's like, this looks like ass. There's no way this should look like... Uh, this should look this bad. I... Did it work? Nope. That's weird. Video, detail level, custom. Alright, I guess I just gotta do this all manually. There we go. Uh, I'm just gonna turn everything the heck to high. We'll just see what happens. There's no way this is going to destroy my computer. Okay, that looks a lot better. This looks a lot better. Okay, so unlike, uh, yeah, it sounds like the same voice actor in Cadence. Cadence, same voice actor. Neat. I think this was made around the time as Witcher 2. So he already had a bit of a name for himself. Quiet. Not a human soul in sight. Yeah, he must, have, he must have already had a bit of, um, I'm going to turn some of these things up and down a little bit. He must have already made a bit of a name for himself at this point, you know, just through the first two Witch, Witcher games. Um. Oh, wow. <laughs> Holy shit. I was not expecting that level of Monsters jumpage. Monsters have claimed the streets. Yeah, Dim that is 100%. Light shine through the dusty windows. I... It's weird. I wonder what horrors hide behind them. I don't necessarily care too much for his voice, but I love the fact that this guy has really managed to corner the market uh, for gruff fantasy man. Because I know he's also the voice actor for... Uh, well, he did the narration for a game that uh, Shell's at least mildly involved in voice acting. Uh, I sense something hidden. Something far more sinister than the monsters. Something faint. Like a whisper in the back of my mind. Holy shit, okay. Um, cause, yeah, he, he's done the narration at least for the trailers for... Was it Song of Flame Shell? Sacred Fire, there we go. Uh, and then also he was the... He was the narrator for Tales of Iron. And this, and then he was also the protagonist in, uh, b Spellforce, Spellforce 3. He was the protagonist in that one. I don't know. I, I love to see a person, uh, I guess get this level of prominence as a voice actor. But, like, I know nothing about the guy. Maybe he's more of, like, a, a prominent personality, but he just feels like kind of the dude that just everybody goes to. 
Let's see, why is, why is Shell muted? She's not muted. She's just busy doing other things. Can we get through here? Anyway, a couple of quick observations that I've already seen. Um, easiest immediate thing, we can jump? That's really unusual for Diablo-like. Uh, for a hack and slash action RPG. I, sh I should take away... Uh, I, sh I should take away some of the mystique of... <laughs> Wow, this guy has some hops. Now nah, it doesn't look like I can get over that. I know the Diablo 2 Barbarian could jump, but it, it was not this. Uh, when I say jumping, like, this is... I can intentionally jump whenever I want to wherever I want. Uh, for platforming Hello. challenges... Who goes there? Hello? Can you hear me? A voice in my head? What else? If you can hear me, jump. Now. Good boy. Now roll over. <laughs> Just kidding. You know there are more of these lovely chests lying around. Can you find them? Okay. So. Uh, it's worse. So, we've got jumping, which is highly unusual. And also, instead of being clicked to move... Uh, okay, here we go. M for maps and challenges. It might not be useful right now. Or click on maps and challenges. Where the heck is that? Uh, maps and challenges. Here we go. So, uh, hand design levels. Instead of click to move, it's WASD to move around. Uh, this is actually a little bit more... Oh, gosh, I don't even know Look, what Hunter, I would describe it a as. treasure chest up there on the balcony. Come on, go get it. You can use the exercise. But yeah, using Q and E for moves. That's not wholly unusual. Oh, there's still a creature here. Uh, rotating the camera is actually really I unusual. I love these boxes. You never know what you're going to get. So exciting. You know, normally with these games, uh, it's a fixed camera perspective. There is no rotation. You can't look around. You can't do anything. You can't jump. Oh, I even have a dodge roll. Weird. I, I like it, though. I, this is part of the reason why I've been specifically wanting uh, to to cover Victor Vran a little bit more. Is that it very much feels... What the heck? Oh, that has lifesteal. That's fun. Uh, it very much feels like an odd departure that I, I wish had maybe caught on a little bit more. Because uh, from a gameplay perspective, this is actually really compelling. Uh, a lot of Diablo-style games get locked into the old, you know, click-to-move... Somewhat slow combat. Uh, I mean, I say that as I'm swinging a giant hammer. There we go. Fallen Keep. The gates of the keep are shut tight. I found an alternate route through a broken sewer grate. By the looks of it, something else passed through before me. Place reeks of death, and I'm beginning to doubt that there are any survivors here. Uh, let's see. It doesn't seem like I have anything else. I but know this place. You're getting closer. Come on, open that door. Oh, watch out, Hunter. Those dummies look tough. They outnumber you. You should consider retreating. <laughs> okay, took some damage, healing potion. Now it's just forcing me to do stuff. Okay, so we gotta build up an overdrive. Look at those dummies with their red eyes and long noses. They're laughing at your feeble. Oh, a demon power. Where did you learn to do that? Hmm. Anyway, I'm trapped in that box. Come on, break it. Wait, that's not me. Oh, well, I must be in another dungeon. <laughs> I appreciate the narrator. Uh, equip shotgun. Oh, okay. So, slightly more specific shots, slightly more range shots, work with it. It's a little... I'm not going to say it's a little hitchy. You definitely can tell there's some jank left over from the development phase. I know this had a bit of a long... Er ugh, uh, a bit of a long early access period, and then uh, hit 1.0. I don't think it ever really, like, drew in a whole lot of people, which is a bit of a shame, actually. 
I released the guards from the cruel fate of the undead and took whatever I could find from the Fallen Keep. I can see the imposing silhouette of Castle Zagor, standing proud like the tallest headstone in this graveyard of a city. I think I can make out lights on the upper floors. Perhaps there are survivors behind the tall walls of the castle. Spider. Interesting. Uh, I'm noticing I'm attacking faster, somewhat periodically. Oh, fire I on cooldown. I sense something shiny nearby. Let me give you a hint. It's bigger than a spider, but it is also full of treasure. And it is sitting on top, looking down at you. I appreciate the, the use of verticality. That's another thing of note. Most, uh... Yes, you found it. Good boy. What did you get? Something shiny. Most games of this genre don't do verticality, and if they do, it's pretty minor. You know, it's just a little bit here and there where it's just like, yeah, you can kind of go up these stairs. Uh, but once again, I, so much of it probably has to do specifically with the fact that they added dun uh, jumping and a bunch of other stuff. There's something about that voice. Something I can't quite place. I've fought and slain many monsters in my line of work. The ones that talk are always the worst. Yeah, I'm noticing if I rotate the camera too quick, it, it jumps forward, which is odd. Not a big deal, but still. But yeah, I'm going to agree. Jumping, dodge rolls, etc. Interesting additions to the Diablo-like formula. Yeah. Castle Zagor is the only remaining beacon of hope in this godforsaken city. There are survivors here, tough, grim, and desperate. I wonder for how long I can use this place as my base of operations before the forces of darkness sniff the living souls hidden behind its thick walls. Music is very generic for this. Hey, so we can also pick our outfit. So, balanced playstyle, uh, caster hero, grants overdrive automatically over time, but your weapons attacks will not generate overdrive. It'll allow you to use demon powers reliably in certain characters with a full overdrive. Or vigilante, overdrive only when you score crits. So it looks like this one's more precision. Yeah, armor provided will reduce the damage from some attacks you suffer. I don't know. Let's go fancy. Let's let's look swank. Oh, the voice sounds familiar to him because they acted together in the first Witcher game, probably. <laughs> All right, casual mode. Uh, let's see, loot drops are reduced in casual mode. Uh, let's see. Oh, you will be able to adjust the game difficulty later by sw switching hexes on and off. And hard mode makes the game harder. You will not be able to turn hexes off while playing on hard mode. Yeah, so we're going to just go normal. And not hardcore. So it's got those. Uh, though, if it's got the multiple difficulty levels, I doubt that it has, like, playthrough on... Oh, that is something to add to the list. Um, playthrough repeatedly on higher difficulties. Okay, there we go. That's another thing for it. Uh, anyway, we're going to do normal and normal. I would love to actually... Okay, so this is a show that I want to do someday. And I, I've waxed about the potential for it. Um, but I really want to do a... Uh, like, get a group of people together as, like, either a charity thing or just a long-running series where effectively everybody is playing a hardcore character. And it's, it's literally... Not a race. Everybody's working together, but when you die, you're dead. You're out of this series. And so it's more of just like, uh, can there you survive the end? After all this time, Castle Zagora still stands. A refuge from the horrors outside. Okay, so there's the Destiny cards. Other, what is this? Oh, Bounty Highlander's Outfit. Slay epic monsters in those locations, probably to get it. Alright. That would be fun. I think it would be really cool. I just need to actually sit down and recruit some people for it. It would be more fun with a brand new game for sure. Uh, so no one's quite to the point of mechanical min-maxing. True. Welcome to Zagoravia, Hunter. Thank you for answering our summons and bringing your sword to our cause. Soon we will push back the enemy. 
If you hurry, you will be rewarded. I like the fact... Okay, so the portraits are a little creepy for me. Um, but I like the fact that it's a, a full portrait instead of just kind of the isometric character sitting there talking or like the tiny little uh, character icon. This is something that I specifically didn't like about Diablo 3 is that you had Decker Kane just talking about this and that and you must save What's-Her-Face before she gets omnommed by the demons. Don't worry about me. I'm fine, unprotected in this end. Oh, shit. You know, that kind of thing. Um, but it, it always blew my mind, specifically, that they didn't actually just have a character portrait like this pop up. Like, obviously the portrait isn't the best, but this is something that I specifically wish that more Diablo likes had, had hack and slash action RPGs. Really gotta just stop referring to them as that. But I wish they had done this, purely because, like, I immediately feel like I'm I'm more immersed as opposed to a talking portrait in a window. Your Majesty, I would gladly see you to safety. It is not safety that we want. We are going to win this war and free my kingdom from the demons. No further help is coming, Your Majesty. What brought me here is the fate of a fellow hunter by the name of Adrian. You may believe no help is coming and have given up, but we stand strong. But if it is your friend you seek, you must go south, to the Royal Gardens. Thank you, Your Majesty. The Queen is strong-willed. It must be how she got this far, but it changes nothing. The city is overrun. I'm Damien the Alchemist. I can help you with useful supplies, like potions and bombs. And you can help me with your gold. <laughs> We alchemists are said to transmute gold into air, but it's all for the benefits of science. Take a look through my inventory. There's not much demand from hunters these days. Okay, so we, j we can just buy or sell things with this guy. I'm just going to sell probably those two. I'm going to hold on to the sword as kind of a back uh, backup just in case the gun becomes problematic. Okay, so this is another thing that specifically drew me to this game. Uh, is that the world is hand-designed and very specific. You have separate areas, but uh, there's actually, like, challenges and quests in each one of these zones. So, five-star, also secrets. So, use ten demon powers. Slay ten, uh, 25 spider eggs. Slay all spider nests in the labyrinth. Slay Argus the dreaded mage. And slay the chess master. Uh, plus, there's secret chambers to check. And also mini dungeons I'm within. I'm back. Did you miss me? <laughs> I know you missed me. But then also beyond that, the... I mean, there's a lot of things that, like, I'm immediately super into. Uh, the fact that Victor Fran is an actual character... I was talking about this right before we started, so those of you watching live... Uh, <laughs> I'm just gonna be like, you already said this. Uh, which is true. But, now that uh, I think about it, we weren't properly introduced. You can call me Voice. I'm currently without a body. So, this seems to fit. What does right-clicking do? Oh. Right-clicking lets me rotate right. Rotate the camera. And then it has that weird skipping. I forgot. Wait, didn't... No. Never mind. So I just have to rotate it very slowly. I'll make now, it work. Now, what should I call you? John. No, you don't look like a John. Victor? Well, that's just stupid. Gennady? No. That doesn't suit you either. I know. I'll call you Vicky. Yes, that seems to fit perfectly. <laughs> I like the preview for the section you're going to. It's nice. It's a little gamey, but it's fun. I One thing that I always found a bit disconnecting about a lot of uh, regular Diablo likes, Diablo likes action RPGs, is that uh, the procedurally generated levels didn't really feel like it was very interesting. It's just like going to kind of generic cave crypt uh, dungeon and so on and so forth. There was no real feeling of connection there. Um, that having this be like a level, a hand design level with all these specific challenges that I meant to do while I'm there, that actually is kind of big. Uh, beyond that, 
strange to see so many watching a Vran stream. Is this 2016? I was this... Were, were people actually interested in Vic, Victor Vran in 2016? I don't remember seeing a whole lot of people... Ugh. Oh, you can double tap. Got it. Um... And unfortunately, I wasn't... I guess I had just kind of... I've been streaming for a while. I think I just never really got around to it. I streamed a little bit of it with my friend, but I didn't look at how well this game performed at the time. It was mostly just kind of a weird novelty that this existed more than anything else. Anyway, um, I, I guess if you weren't here at the start and aren't familiar with me, uh, I'm... Uh, let's see. I'm specifically recording a whole bunch of hack and slash action RPGs today because I want to do a video talking about the uh, the absolute best alternatives to Diablo 3 uh, Resurrected as I have minimal to no intro. Uh. Oh, right. We slay, uh, slew the spider eggs. Is that a... Yeah, there's a spider in there. Uh, and so I need a bunch of footage if I want to make that video. Sure, I could actually just steal a bunch of footage from the Steam pages or something like that, but that would that just feels scummy to me, so I'm not going to do it. And so instead, I'm going through a bunch of the ones that I don't already have footage for. You know, I've got plenty of Grim Dawn. I got a little bit of Titan Quest, Path of Exile, for example. Golden the eggs that I killed. Oh, shoot. I'll go back. Unless it disappears, which is possible. Hell. So let's see about character... Oh, Destiny cards. You can now equip Destiny cards, which grant various passive abilities. Each Destiny card requires Destiny points and a free Destiny slot. Your slots and points will increase at certain levels. Neat. Okay. Oh. In addition to new ability, you gain bonus item on every level. Select your reward to level up. So we've got Hope, Health, Warrior, Melee Damage, and Strength, Crit Chance. I'm going to go with Strength. I feel like... Uh, strength is probably the most universally useful at the moment. How many... I don't actually know how many Destiny points I have. I'm sure it says on a meter somewhere, but I'm missing it. Oh, well, it's fine. Oh yeah, there's the money. Cool. And it doesn't just dis uh, disappear. So are those based on tarot cards? Yeah, 100%. They've got to be. Strength, warrior... I don't remember what the last one was, but still. It's weird. I have minimal immediate interest in tarot cards as, like, a thing. Uh, I knew a couple of people that, like, firmly believed in tarot cards growing up, but I was always just kind of like, eh, seems kind of kooky to me. I would love to draw my own uh, set of tarot cards someday. Just as kind of like a fun thing. Oh, hope. Uh, I don't think there's a tarot card for hope, though. So, maybe it's only partly. Okay, that's just a heal. It looks like I heal over time or something. Unfortunately, this game doesn't have dev support, no seasons or anything. Plenty to keep your attention for hundreds of hours, but nothing to keep you here. Say it with love, it's one of my favorite games. I mean... I... I think that's a good thing. I think I think the biggest downside is potentially that, you know, there's no follow-up to this. I have no idea what the developers have been up to. Uh, in their absence? Whoa, I got a speed boost. Kind of overkill to just drop meteors on the spiders, but you know what? Whatever. Why not? I'll do it anyway. But, like, I keep trying to get into Path of Exile, and I just can't. I love the idea of the game, but it is exhausting. Uh, I think, truly, the, the expectation of it kind of owning you as a person uh, for a while, and then coming back for every season and stuff like that. Like, that sort of thing, I think, can appeal to a lot of people that really want to sit... Uh, sink a bunch of time into it, but as a more casual player, when I hear that a game is just like, you know, has tons of content, but once you're done with it, you are done, like, that's kind of big for me. Right, I forgot, I can, I can dodge roll. That's useful. 
Okay, what did what did I just get? Oh. Uh, Hammer of the Assassin. Even more crit chance. Let's drop some meteors. I've gotten to the point in my life where hundreds of hours in one game isn't appealing. Yeah, or at least, you know, if it's a really long game. Like, uh, well, I don't know. I didn't find Persona to be particularly appealing. Like, Persona 5, I, I was actually looking at my statistics recently, and it was, uh, it was something to the extent of, like, Persona 5 remains one of my top streamed games ever on Twitch, and that blew my mind a little bit and then upset me. Uh... Mainly just because, like, I don't hate the game, but it was, like, too damn long. And it freaks me out a little bit that it, you know, years later, it's still one of my most streamed games. But I think a lot of that boils down to the fact that I, I really do like variety. As opposed to really long things. There we go. Sound effects are kind of here and there on this one. Devs Haymount are more RTS focused. They made Tropico, Surviving Mars, etc. Oh. I didn't realize uh, it was the Tropico and Surviving Mars people. I knew I knew the publisher uh, specifically did those, but I didn't realize it was the exact same devs. As long as the story is engaging with a long time, it's fine. For me, it has to be both gameplay and story. No matter how good your story is, if your gameplay is like ass, I lose interest. Uh, like, I... Oh, you know what? I see what looks like maybe a chessboard over here. Let's drink a potion. I got plenty of them. This has got to be it. Yep, there we are. Chess master. Is a spider? Okay, I'm just gonna sit here shooting. Cause the nice part is I can just kind of kite freely. Let my juice reload. Blast them all. And nothing's really gonna be able to stop me. Especially when I get meteors shortly. Okay. R Checkmate. There we go. <laughs> Oh, and that's just all EXP. Wait. Was that him laughing, saying checkmate? Ooh, dancing sort of luck. I'll take it. This shotgun is pretty trash. If it has fantastic story but crappy gameplay, it would be almost better as a movie. Yep. I've definitely... Okay, attack speed and equip... Yeah, sure, why not? We're getting a little bored of the uh, shotgun anyway. And I don't need that. All right, we're good. Oh, is this a guardian card? Okay, so it looks like the cards are actually something I can equip. Release an explosion when hit in melee. 150 damage, 10% chance. It ignores armor. Explosion has a 10% chance to electrocute foes. Ah, there's destiny points. Well, that's cool. I was not expecting them to truly just be equipment that I slot in and out. I'm all about gameplay. Being able to move with WASD is a big must for me in hack and slash ARPGs. Does this have controller support? Because I feel like it could work really well with that too. Okay. So Archer, Rogue, or a gift box. These are pretty bad. And now that we know we can get these cards from random drops, I'm going to grab a gift box and then maybe specifically leave it for later. Okay, have played this with a controller. It was on the Xbox. Because that was something for me specifically that uh, bothers me about a lot of action RPGs. I'm Look, really not... Maze. That looks fun. Let's go there. I'm not really big on action RPGs. Now, can you find your way out? <laughs> I'm not really big on action RPGs that are click to move. I found those to actually be quite uncomfortable. Okay. I find them to be quite uncomfortable after a while, and I get very disconnected. Whereas being able to move around with a controller or WASD immediately feels more immersive, like I'm actually controlling the character as opposed to just kind of vaguely directing their actions. 
And it's odd because I, I'm sure it's just purely a personal preference standpoint. Oh, tab pulls up the map. Good to know. I'm missing the shotgun a little bit. There we go. That's it. Do I grab the overdrive shrine? How much do I care? I don't actually know. Nice hey, part is like, cheating. who cares? No jumping. <laughs> he, he's like, you know, how are you going to explore the maze? And it's like, I didn't realize this was supposed to be hard. Ooh, that hurt. Okay, I don't know what Defiant does. Nor do I know what Boomerang does. But that's fine. The Victor Van gameplay wise reminds me more of Guild Wars 2 with the way you dodge, jump, and swing weapons, etc. Yeah. I think that's actually a very apt comparison. Especially like the dodge roll and some other things. And the uh I'm gonna call it almost cooldown based resource system like obviously overdrive is your mana but not quite that's something i always kind of hated about diablo 2 was very much just like making sure i had enough mana to cast whatever it's just like i don't know that's kind of works in some games but i find it's it gets dull it's not handled in a very graceful or interesting manner in most games uh so I not exactly within the bounds of this game or even genre. Divinity Original Sin kind of ruins CRPGs for me because most CRPGs, if you're playing a caster, it's just like, hey, what if you uh, only got a handful of your spells that you could use? And I'm just like, eh, that's boring. And then Divinity Original Sin is like, hey, but what if you were just ridiculous and could cast anything as much as you want on a slight cooldown? It's like, yeah, actually sign me up for that. That sounds great. I wish there was more enemy variety. I think it's mostly just this area. Part of the other problem is that I'm specifically getting um, harassed by like a ridiculous amount of spiders. Uh, no, I should probably do the sword. Okay. It's probably controversial, but point and click for ARPGs is about as clunky as real time with pause for RPGs. I wouldn't... <laughs> See, I fully agree with you. I, I find... Uh, I find real time with pause to be, it works if I've got the game on easy and if I just want to coast through. So like when I was playing Wrath of the Right, uh, Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous, I just had a team of characters that were very much uh, not meant to be played particularly tactically, just a bunch of big hitmen and nothing more. Uh, and then more or less just said like, and I'm going to turn on the tactical mode if I need it. But uh, then otherwise just let my... Uh, let my characters just plow through foes. I think that was a better system for me as a person that didn't care for the combat because I found it kind of boring. Um, but then I think for, mo for most people, I don't know. I really don't know. I think it comes down to personal preference and that most AR ARPGs follow this specific um this specific tradition mostly truly because of tradition and i can't necessarily blame them for doing so but it feels like it's kind of restrictive Ooh, second weapon so i can switch between them uh and let's grab a scythe because i haven't tried to scythe and it also does bonus damage against spiders how do i switch weapons middle click ah middle click to switch cool you're not a spider. Who? But boy, I'm getting those overkills. Okay, so there's a daze, and then there's the spin. Oh, we got a soul shard, whatever that does. Real time with pause works well in Diablo, from what I remember. I think it's. Vicky, this I is think it, such oh. a fun place, full of ancient things, terrible things, things that go kaboom. <laughs> Level my four. I'm gonna that wait you on that one. Go inside. Perhaps when you're a little bit taller. 
crude. Uh, I think it worked fine in Baldur's Gate, but, you know, once again, kind of going along with the uh, Divinity Original Sin, playing that game in full turn-based with all the bells and whistles involved was very eye-opening. It was very slow, and I think that's the, the one downside to it, that, like, turn-based really is, is kind of sluggish. But from the perspective of somebody that, like, really wants to get in deep into combat, it has to be turn-based or I lose interest. Uh, I went back recently to... What recently... Whenever... Whenever the, uh, the Red Alert remaster came out, I was playing that, and I was just blown away by how frustrating it was to actually... to play that game. Okay, so I've got to find Argus... the... Dreaded Mage. Maybe it's here. We're also missing at least two secrets, and I don't know where they'd be, but I don't care that much. Yeah, it's a good spin. The sword spin is kind of mediocre. The scythe spin is just like, hey, you want to just roll through enemies? If only I could make it oh, longer. Oh, I sent something young and delicious up ahead. I'll go and introduce myself. Don't be jealous, Vicky. I'll be back. <laughs> I, I should also probably mention that I'm really... Oh, gosh. Okay. I'm really digging the narrator. I kind of wish uh, Victor would actually respond a little bit. Because it's a little odd that he he pretty much doesn't. Oh, by the way, do you know how to make it so the camera doesn't, like, flip when I'm rotating too fast? Because that's actually putting me off a little bit. As the one downside I've seen so far is to this game. Otherwise, like, I'm really enjoying the combat. I'm curious how many different weapon types there are. And I'm hoping to see some more, like, demon powers to play around with. Yeah, I've only found one of the secrets. Uh, let's see, have I checked these out here? I don't know if rolling is any faster. That looks like a big no for me. Okay, so if there's something there, I don't know. Look at this central fountain. Anything? No. Doesn't look like I can go in. Okay, so wherever those secrets are, uh, I might not get them. Okay, you don't have that issue with the camera. Ah, that's a shame. It might be something to do with my refresh rate or my computer or like a gazillion other things. Okay, 10 weapon types including DLC. Okay. But then again, who am I kidding? Diablo does not have a whole lot of variety either. Nope, doesn't look like you can go in there. If I was more committed to playing this through, I'd probably find a map at some point and just be like, where are all the secrets so I can find them and not have to think about it? Hello. And here I thought I was the last living hunter in this damn city. Victor Vran, just arrived. Don't plan on staying long. <laughs> That's what I said when I arrived a year ago. Yet, here I am, still killing demons and trying to make sense of what happened. Do you know a hunter by the name of Adrian? I've heard of him, but we never cross paths. The only hunters I've seen recently lie lifeless. You could check the crypts. I haven't been down there for a while. But I wouldn't get my hopes up. There are demons everywhere. Thank you. I didn't catch your name. Because I didn't say it. My name is Irene. See you around, Victor Vran. Trying to make sense of what happened. Hmm. She has another reason to stay here this long, I'm certain. Oh, the reason why we haven't found everything, including the specific enemy. Irene paints a bleak picture. Zagoravia is lost. Uh, yeah, the reason why we haven't found everything is because we're not actually done with the area. Got it. 
So the problem with variety in this game is it takes a few hundred hours of grinding to get enough uh, enough to really make uh, make building a build pop. That's ah, a shame. Maybe I don't know. I think it very much is. Uh, I can absolutely see why people would be super into that sort of thing. Um, mildly from my own perspective, I really do prefer the kind of shorter style for this game. Uh, you know, something qu quick, beatable within like 10 or 15 hours. But I think a lot of that just has to do with the fact that that's where I, where I am in life. The faster I can kind of get to the meat of a game and really sink my teeth into it, the happier I am. Not necessarily because I don't want to spend more time, but just because I'm so overloaded in other games that it's like, eh, eh. Okay, frost explosion on, on crit, 15 second cooldown, that's eh, not a bad idea. Or another guardian. Getting two guardians would be kind of amusing just because. But now let's get a, let's get the moon. This is better than strength. Unlock a 10, 20, and 30. Neat. Like how the skellies get yeeted. I mean, wow. <laughs> yeah, I hadn't really processed that. I don't know. I think that's great. I wish more of these games actually I involved. I rise in the dawn oh. and I kneel and blow till the seed of the fire flicker and glow. I bet I'm gonna this maybe have to remember doesn't that. This seem hostile. More like confused. Hey, thank you, Mini Murgle. Wow, yeah, we're getting hit by those hard. I'm gonna look to see if there's a way that I can auto, uh, auto ban those or even block them before they they go by. Dang, I was hoping they would have like passed me by, uh, and just not realize that I exist. But alas. I was going to say, I'm kind of glad I haven't gotten hate rated yet, but at the same time, I'm sure, I, to some degree, I'd almost rather it hap happen to me than to somebody a lot more immediately vulnerable. That is a sick looking Nova, like moon no Nova ability. I like it. I got the follow feed after the first one. Yeah. For those of you that don't know, there's a new trend on Twitch for uh, bots that specifically... Uh, if you go to their profile, they can actually steal your IP address and maybe some other information. Um, and that's freaking spooky. Uh, and the fact that that's even possible on Twitch pisses me the heck off. Um, you know, that Twitch hasn't been super active about like trying to stop that sort of thing. Go bad. Wow, eating skeletons is great. Bots are scary. They seriously are. So for the story st stuff, any build will do. Anything above 20 plus epic Adrian is going to require some grinding. Hunter, hmm. But can he survive this place? And why would he keep fighting for a lost cause? That's why Wander is scary too. I mean... Oh, we found Argus, finally. I should probably heal. I hadn't really processed I'd taken so much damage. There we go. Nope, he gets back up. So something around here kind of picks them back up, either that or they just don't die immediately. Either or, really. Okay, so we've completed map challenges. A fallen hunter. One less sword on our side. One more life claimed by the void. Rest in peace, brother. Let's see, Goody, is there a list of known bots that steal your information? Unfortunately, no. Uh, so the way it works is uh, they're fly-by-night. Many of them get banned pretty quickly. But the thing is, it's so easy to make a, an account on Twitch that... Uh, they just make hundreds, you know, today specifically, I'm seeing six originally plus an additional four. So I've gotten followed by 10. Um, and so what Twitch 
effectively uh, requires. I wouldn't necessarily say that they require it, but uh, Twitch's solution is just to have users submit stuff or submit reports like, hey, this is, you know, this is a bad actor bot account. Uh, and then they ban it manually. Which is a piss poor way of doing things. But that's what they've been doing. Oh. Sick treasure chest. Secret or... Ah, it was a secret. Sword of Vampirism. Okay, that sounds really good. Uh, let's see. 34 health on hit. Yeah, that's better than the other sword that I got. Do I want to roll a shotgun? Iffy. I'm liking the scythe. It's a little bit of a long cooldown to use use the fun abilities, but at the same time, maybe worth it. Okay, so I have a Befouled Tomb, Royal Crypt, and Sepulcher of the Damned. I guess let's just go with one. How do you know which ones are the bots? They all have the same name. It's just, you know, it'd be like Wanderbot A, B, C, 00, zero X, 3. You know, stuff like that. This is such a neat, neat little preview thing. Destroy burial urns in the Sepulcher of the Damned. Overkill skeletons. Slay monsters with a hammer. Find secrets and slay monsters without taking damage. That should be, uh, some of those should be doable. I don't know about without taking damage, though. The smell hits you right away. Not the stale, dry smell of a tomb. No, this is another all-too-familiar smell. The smell of rotting flesh. Okay. Yeah, overkill skeletons. Easy peasy. Though it's interesting that they're saying rotting flesh, but... <laughs> you know, skeletons aren't exactly known for having a whole lot of flesh. Bark skin potion, fire bomb, or... Nah, let's go for another gift box. I don't use consumable items. It's a problem. I like the mystery aspect of the story. It makes the game feel more atmospheric. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of things that I specifically want to highlight that Victor Vran does that no other hack and slash action RPG really does. I, first and foremost, having a voice acted character that has a personality and motivations. You know, that part alone is big. Uh, normally when you play these games... Oh, I can actually just break those. Uh, normally when you play these games, you are a voiceless, faceless character that effectively only exists to kill stuff, grab loot, and do the bidding of NPCs that actually have personalities and characterization. I say that kind of loosely because it doesn't Another actually seem... Body. Could that be Adrian? Okay. Got some of these. So, I've overkilled skeletons. Destroy burials. Slay monsters without taking damage. Restart the map to try again. I'm not going to do that. I think I'd need a shotgun for that. And even then, I'd probably want to be stronger. Luckily, I can always come back later. I know there's also secrets that I can potentially find. But I'll leave that for later. Murder hobo incarnate in most games, basically. I mean, One of you don't ours have a is choice here, there. But it isn't Adrian. I will cleanse this tomb so you can rest in peace, brother. Like, when you play a Diablo-like, you really aren't given much of an opportunity to ever roleplay. Um, and so there's not really a whole lot of point to considering it. Nice from the, nice that the quest EXP just auto-drop. Yeah! But, so, having, having Geralt's uh, Gerald. Having Victor Vran be a voice the character. The death of a hunter is like the death of a brother or sister. We mourn and raise a toast to celebrate the deeds and lives of those we lose. Hello? Got him. Beautiful. Okay, slay monsters with the hammer. I think I'm just gonna keep the hammer for the time being. The hammer is really fun. You know, the scythe would yeet enemies. The hammer uber ye yeets. 
Especially with that explosion. Like, damn. <laughs> it's so good. Let's see, what else do we have? I mean, the, the hand design levels I think are pretty good. Because it definitely makes me feel a lot more connected to what I'm doing. Oh, there we go. Especially with the inclusion of secrets. You know, it's actually something to look look for and find. A lot of games don't do secrets at all. Or if they do secrets, they're kind of boring. I think in this one, it's kind of just like a fun little diversion where you're like, Oh yeah, that was a little secret room. Like so. I think this is a secret. Yep, one out of two. Of course, let no secret go un unrewarded. Oh, well, that didn't work. Ooh. Okay. I am going to have trouble getting this thing. Clearly, I should probably grab me a shotgun. Or I just drop meteors on it repeatedly. There we go. Alright, it's is dead. Anything else? Music got better. I'm liking this song a fair bit more. It feels properly crypty. Okay, what else we got in here? I know there's another secret. Okay, I'm gonna dip out. Oh, good. The game pauses. Attack cooldown's reduced. Yes. Let's do that instead of the sword. There we go. I love the idea of the attack cooldowns reduced on overkill. That seems like it's busted strong. Holy shit, yeah, look at that. If I could get this gun to do, like, a silly amount of damage, I could probably just mow through group, like, just whole hordes. Oh, especially with that, that AoE. I don't know. I'm seeing a lot of potential here. Uh, more so than, Over I think, a lot here. of ARPGs. Help. Hello. Oh, thank the gods you came to save me. I was, I was on patrol with some of the hunters to carry their provisions and, and trophies. We were attacked, and I, I made a, uh, <clears throat> a tactical retreat. You just ran and left the hunters to die? Well, y you see, I... I I'm a, I'm a coward, and that has kept me alive in this hell. I, I was sure that someone would come along to rescue me. So so the coast is, is clear? C can I get back home? Even a coward's life will feed the evil brewing here. I've cleared the way to the castle. You can go. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. I, I promise I'll find a way to repay you. Okay, so six to seven Destiny cards, usable at a time. 57 different cards with 16 extra properties to put on them. 11 outfits that change the overdrive mechanic. 19 demon powers, 18 consumables, 15 talismans with 20 plus trigger types, 75 unique monsters, 11 of which are bosses, 41 buffs and debuffs applied through weapons, talismans, demon powers, etc. I... That's a very good pitch for this game. Alright, well... Uh, let's see. Do we want to call it here? Yeah, I've been going for 53 minutes. I would enjoy playing some more, but I think at this point, I'm going to say we have a very, very solid idea of what Victor Vran is, and I once again will probably maintain my appreciation for this game. I don't know if and when I will get back to this one, unless people really, really want me to. Uh, but from from the perspective of like, oh. Diamond, common. Summon a magical shield that orbits, absorbs damage, and reflects ranged attacks. Shield slowly decays over time. You don't gain overdrive while this demon power is active. Ooh, that's kind of neat. Not the greatest, but still. Looks like a number of the weapons are pretty rad, too. Um, I think if this game got a sequel, it would be very successful. I think they'd have to work on the PR a little bit, but now that uh, Diablo is kind of uh, persona non grata, it might actually have a shot. That said, I think they're working on other things. 
It may have been 50 minutes, but it certainly sold me into looking into acquire it on the next team sale. The yeah. heavens blessed Irene with a brave, albeit somewhat hasty heart. Be patient with her, my son. You two stand together against the darkness. I like his voice actor. It's good. I think the only one I didn't like was the uh, steampunk girl, but that's about it. Yeah, Blizzard going belly up might be a good thing after all. I think so. I, I think so many people are, are uh, I'm not going to say kind of stuck in their ways, but that, oh wow, I really like the floor texture here. I didn't even notice it coming through, but this is like a legitimately beautiful area. Um, but I think it's so easy to just be like, you know, I don't want to play another Diablo like, I'll just wait for the next Diablo iteration, or I'm just going to play the next Diablo season. And it's like, yeah, but look at all these other great games here. And yeah, this goes pretty cheap too. Oh yeah, I think I've seen this one down for like three to five dollars. And yeah, I don't actually see Activision Blizzard going belly up, but I could see Blizzard not being, um, I, I could see Blizzard, like the Blizzard half of Activision Blizzard slowly fading away. Um, and you know, I don't want to say like I'm, I'm looking forward to the death of a company, but at the same time, they left a void, and there's a bunch of really solid games to take its place. I think the only problem is the RTS market, but you know, who knows? Maybe at some point it'll see its own renaissance and we'll see some really rad, rad games pop up. But at least as far as like the Diablo side of things, oh boy, they got that covered in a half. Because uh, yeah, once again, I think this one's absolutely fantastic. It's on Steam. I think it's on Good Old Games. And if you wait for a Steam sale, it gets dang cheap. Uh, which speaking of... I believe, unless I'm mistaken, I think this is included in the good old games sale. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Is Victor Brand on here? Yeah. Okay, so um, if if you guys watching the stream right now are interested in picking this up, you don't mind buying things on, on uh, good old games, they're actually running a hack and slash sale. Uh, and so you can actually pick up Victor Vran for six bucks. You can also pick up a bunch of the other really, really good hack and slash action RPGs. Slormancer, which is one that I really enjoy. Can't get it too cheap, but still, Children of, Mo Children of Morta, Shadows Awakening, uh, Grim Dawn. I mean, that's kind of a no-brainer. Book of Demons is damn cheap. Uh, Victor Vran did have a Motorhead DLC. It's not good. <laughs> I The... Uh, the... I believe the DLC for Victor Vran, maybe Fractured Worlds was okay. But the actual, uh, the Motorhead one I don't think was very good at all. But it's fine. You don't care. Well, I don't. I, I guess I don't care about that sort of thing. But I can see why people would. Hey, I liked it. Yeah, but you're a super fan. Nah, that's fine. Anyway. Uh, so with all that said, for those of you watching on YouTube at least, if you guys like this video in any way, shape, or form, leave me a like. Helps more than you know. And if you want to see more rad new indie games, but especially at least for a little while, uh, hack and slash action RPGs and hit subscribe because yeah, I got a bunch of these that have just been kind of building up over time that I want to check out. So with that, let's move on to the next.